All right, let's go ahead and go through some of these practice problems where we're going to calculate um, a variable if a certain uh, there's a certain change in condition. And so this equation here is called the combined gas law. And if you take a look, this is the initial pressure, the initial volume, the initial moles, and the initial temperature. And so these are our beginning conditions. This is what we start with. And then we have our second pressure, our new pressure, our new volume, new moles, and new temperature. And so this is the initial condition, and this is the final condition. And we can use the combined gas law to um, calculate um, a variable if there's a change in another variable. Now, what's nice about this equation is if you are given, if you were not given one of the variables, you can cross out that variable. Or if it says that something is remaining constant, you can cross that out. So let's go ahead and get started here. Notice how we're, we're given, it says a sample of gas is at 150 milliliters, so this is V1, and it's a pressure of point. 947, so this is P1. So we're getting V1 and P1. And then it says, what will the volume of the gas be if the pressure becomes 0.987? So this is going to be P2. And what it's asking for, it says, what is the volume? What will the volume be? So this is what it's asking for is V2. Now it says that the temperature of the gas remains constant. And again, if something is constant, you can cross it out. So we can cross that out. The other thing too is it does not even mention moles. It doesn't give us moles at all. And if it doesn't give you the moles, it's assuming the moles are constant as well. So we can cross it out. So if it doesn't give you a variable, if it doesn't give you one of the variables, or if it says it remains constant, you can cross it out and look at what we end up with. We end up with P1V1 equals P2V2. And so now what we can do is now that we've crossed out this bottom part and we're left with um, essentially, I'm going to go ahead and erase this here. We're left with essentially this equation here where it's P1V1 equals P2V2. We can then go ahead and plug in these variables and solve for uh, v, V2. And so P1 Okay, this is going to be 0 0.947. V1 is 150. All right, so that's this right here. Now, before I go forward, before I plug in um, P2, what I want you to notice is what's happening to the pressure. The pressure is increasing. And if the pressure is going up, what must the volume be doing? And so I want you to kind of answer that question. If the pressure is increasing, is the volume increasing or is the volume decreasing? And so the reason why I want you to answer that or start thinking about that as you're reading this problem, um, or in other words, I want you to anticipate what's going to happen. Uh, the reason why is because on an exam, you can maybe already eliminate certain options. Or if you get a number that doesn't make sense, you can then kind of tell yourself, oh, I must have done something wrong. So anyways... Um, then we have P2, which P2 is 0.987, and then we don't know what V2 is, and so that's what we're solving for. And so now it becomes a simple algebra problem where we solve for V2. And the way you solve for V2 is whatever is happening to it, to get V2 alone by itself, you have to do the opposite. So notice how V2 is being multiplied by 0.987. So what's the opposite of multiplying by 0.987? It's dividing by 0.987. And if you divide the one side, you have to divide the other side as well. And these cancel, kind of like units. And then we end up with V2 is equal to this setup right here, which we just need to type in our calculator. And you end up getting 143... Uh, and actually it's going to be 144 with sig figs because you're starting with three sig figs because really there is a decimal right here. So you'll end with three sig figs. And what are the units going to be? Well, with these equations, whatever the units are that you start with will be the units that you end with. So what are the units of the volume that we're starting with? It's milliliters. And so we're ending with milliliters. And so this is our answer here. And so essentially... Um, if the pressure becomes 0.987, it's because the volume has become 144 milliliters. 
um, which makes sense because if the pressure is going up, it's because the volume is going down. All right, let's go ahead and go on to this next one. Okay, so we've got uh, a sample of gas. Okay, so here we go. Um, and it's uh, got this volume here, so this is V1. This is T1, and it says what volume will the gas occupy if the temperature becomes 50 degrees Celsius? So that's T2, and it's saying pressure is remaining constant. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, I want you to look at this entire equation, and I want you to, to think about what are we crossing out in that equation. What we're crossing out, again, we're crossing out what's not given to us or what's constant. It says pressure remains constant, so we can cross out pressure. Also, it's not giving us moles at all, so we can cross out moles. And what we end up with, essentially, is this equation like this. And it's really neat how that works out. And so you can just erase or cross out uh, the variables that aren't a part or aren't involved in the problem. And so now we just plug it in. So V1 is 752 milliliters. Now, what do we have to do to T1, though? We're given 25 degrees Celsius. But here's the thing. We can't put Celsius in here. When it comes to volume and pressure, those can be whatever units they give you. But when it comes to temperature, you have to add 273. And the reason you have to add 273 is because you need to take the Celsius and convert it to Kelvin. And so um, if it's giving it to you in Kelvin already, then you don't need to do that. But if it's in Celsius, you have to convert it to Kelvin by adding 273. And it ends up being 298 Kelvin. All right, and then equals. Now we don't know V2, okay? But again, this is T2 is in Celsius, so we have to add 273, and then this ends up being uh, 323. And so what we're left with is this setup here, where all we need to do is solve for, for V, and really this is just cross, multiply, and divide. Um, I know there's several ways that uh, people have been taught this, but um, I think of it, I guess pe uh, people might call this the baseball bat and baseball way, where you circle um, these and you then circle this. And essentially what you're doing is you're, you're uh, multiplying these, all right, you're multiplying these, and then you're dividing by that. Um, whatever method you use to, um, to solve for this, um, it's, it doesn't matter. So you cr it's cross multiply and divide also. So you can cross multiply and divide. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking this, you're multiplying it by this, you're cross multiplying, and then you're gonna end up dividing by the 298. And when you type that in your calculator, you end up getting V2 is equal to 815. And that's gonna be milliliters. Now, Again, let's go ahead and think about this. Uh, it looks like the volume is increasing. Does that make sense? Well, the temperature is increasing, so that means the volume is increasing as well. So that does make sense. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Now this one, if you take a look, it's giving us a pressure. It's giving us a temperature. And it's saying that uh, the directions on the can were warn the user not to keep the can in a place where the temperature exceeds 52 degrees Celsius. And the question is, well, if it did get to 52 de degrees Celsius, what would the gas pressure in millimeters of mercury be? So what would the gas pressure in millimeters of mercury be? So what we need to do is solve for P2. Now there is something different about this one, all right? Um, let's go ahead and first cross out a variable. So we're not dealing with volume, so we can erase the volume. Okay, the, it's an aerosol can staying the same. The number of moles is staying the same as well. And so we end up with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Now, P1, what I wanna uh, point out is P1 is, is 3.00 atmospheres. And then we divide it by 
T1, which again is giving to giving it to us in Celsius, so we have to add 273 to convert it to Kelvin. And when we do that, you end up with 3... Uh, oh, or... No, 298. Now, it does not give us P2. And it does give us T2, which is 52 degrees Celsius. Again, it's giving it to us in Celsius, so we have to add 273, which is going to be 325. And all you have to do now is solve for P2. So again, you just cross multiply and divide. And when you do that, you end up with P... 2 is equal to 3.27. Now, it's 3.27 what? Well, whenever you're using this equation, the units you start with are going to be the units you end with. So the units for the pressure that you start with will be the units for the pressure that you end with. And notice how we're starting with atmospheres. We're starting with atmospheres. And so if we uh, are starting with atmospheres, we're going to end with atmospheres. However, look at what the problem's asking, though. The problem is not, is, is not asking for atmospheres. It's wanting the answer in millimeters of mercury. And we happen to know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And so what we need to do now... And I'm going to erase some, some of this to give me some space. Is we need to take our 3.27 atmospheres. And we need to convert atmospheres to millimeters of mercury. And we know one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. And when you type that in the calculator, you end up getting 2,000... 485 millimeters of mercury. However, that's still not right because we have to think about sig figs. We're starting with three sig figs, so we have to end with three sig figs. And so really, this uh, seven, I mean this two, uh, 2485 becomes 2490 because the five makes the eight round up. And this is going to be millimeters of mercury. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the next one now. Uh, and just uh, real quick, this is the answer here. So it's not this. Although that is the answer, just in different units. Okay, so this next one, um, this is a little bit, this is a bigger one here. So this one is, we're starting off with a volume. Okay, this is uh, V1. This is T1, and this is P1. So we're starting off with a certain volume, temperature, and pressure. And what it's asking for, it says what volume, so it's asking for V2, so this is what it's asking for. Will it have, if the pressure is changed to this, so this is P2, and the temperature is changed to this, so this is T2. And so notice how we're dealing with pressure, volume, and temperature. And so what that means is we can erase the moles but we're dealing with all three other ones. And so we just go ahead and plug this in. So we have P1, V1 over T1. So it's gonna be P1, which is 1.08. V1, which is 50 over T1, which if you take a look, T1 is 25 degrees Celsius, but again, you have to add 273 to make it Kelvin. If it's already giving it to you in Kelvin, you don't need to do that. And then this is equal to P2, which is 0.855. It's asking for V2. And again, T2 is going to be the 10.0 Celsius, which we add 273 to it. And when we do that, we get the 283 for that. Uh, again, there's uh, so all we have to do is solve for V2. There's several ways of doing that. This is this is actually how um, I think about doing it. 
Um, what I do is I actually take this here and I combine it into a single thing. And then I take this and I combine it into the single thing. So um, what, what I do is, let's go ahead and do this uh, left side here. So this here becomes 0.1812, and I know that's more sig figs uh, than, than you need, but um, it's better to carry out your sig figs and worry about the, the sig figs in the end. And then this becomes 0 0.003021, and yeah, two. And then, uh, and then this is being multiplied by V2. So V2 is being multiplied by that. And so what you do is to get V2 by yourself, by itself, you divide both sides by this. This is a decimal here. And again, these cancel out just like what we do with units. And then we're left with V2 is equal to, is equal to, 59.98, but this rounds up to, to, to make it become six, uh, three sig figs, it actually rounds up to 60.0. And because the volume is starting in liters, it ends in liters as well, and that is our answer. And that is um, all there is to it. Um, really, just to recap, notice how we um, just need to cross out or re erase whatever variable we're not dealing with and then we plug in our numbers and then it's basic algebra to solve for uh, the unknown. And so um, it's really straightforward. Um, one thing I'm going to really point out right now, and this is very important, is these problems, what's happening is there's a change in condition. And so you're going to use the combined gas law when there is a change in condition. Now, we're going to learn an equation, another formula next class period, um, where you use it if there, when there's not a change in condition. And so um, just keep in mind that this is when there's a change. We have an initial pressure volume temperature, and then we have a final pressure volume or temperature. And so um, we'll, we'll uh, emphasize that more as we go. Uh, but that's all uh, there is to it. Uh, do the practice pro the independent practice problems. Uh, make sure that you're uh, understanding the material um, well enough, and uh, you'll you'll see it's not too bad. Have a great day.